Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to speak at the Indo-Pacific Business Forum on behalf of the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration. Thank you to the U.S. Trade and Development Agency for the invitation to speak today, and greetings to our host, the government of Vietnam. I look forward to the day when I can visit your beautiful country in person for a meeting such as this. You know, it was one year ago, on the heels of the 2019 Indo-Pacific Business Forum, that the U.S. Trade and Development Agency, the Department of Transportation, the Federal Aviation Administration, the Transportation Security Administration, and the Department of Commerce, along with 30 industry partners, launched the U.S. Southeast Asia Aviation Cooperation Program, or ACP for short. Now, when we launched the ACP, the Indo-Pacific region was a high area of aviation growth. In fact, when I attended the Singapore Air Show in early February, which was the only international trip to this region that I made in person this year, the region was one of the fastest growing in the world for commercial aviation. Of course, that was before COVID-19 wreaked havoc on the global economy. We went from unsurpassed growth to a major slowdown. Overall in 2020, global air traffic is down 54%. And as we all know, that puts us in uncharted territory. What we do know is that the decline in aviation has a direct correlation to global GDP. According to ICAO, the steep drop in airline passenger trips worldwide for the first nine months of 2020 has resulted in a decline of approximately $300 billion globally and almost $90 billion for the Asia Pacific region. Not surprisingly, COVID-19 has also had an impact on the U.S. Southeast Asia ACP. We were not able to implement a lot of the activities that we had planned, but I'm encouraged that the U.S. Trade and Development Agency, or USTDA, has had several industry partners submit valuable proposals for consideration that we're now in the process of coordinating for delivery. Now, while we've started to see some very slight recovery I think we can all agree that it's going to be a long, slow process over several years to get back to the volume of traffic we enjoyed in 2019. Now, since aviation is a major economic driver in the global marketplace, it's clear that the global aviation community will have to play a key role in the recovery of the world economy. And that's why events like this are so important. Their strength in the relationships that we built over many years through our collaboration with the USTDA, particularly in the Indo-Pacific region, where we're active in the U.S. India and U.S. Southeast Asia ACPs. Through these public-private partnerships, FAA, USTDA, and our other U.S. government and industry partners have worked with Indo-Pacific governments to share experience and expertise in the areas of aviation safety, air traffic management, and airport development. Two shining examples of this collaboration are the upcoming U.S.-India Executive Development Training Program and the Vietnam Airport Management Training Program. Both of these training programs focus on human capacity development and skills development for the aviation workforce of the future. Through these USTDA programs, FAA will engage with aviation officials, airport managers, airlines, and air navigation service providers to discuss key concepts underlying the future of air travel in the region. Another example is our work with the ICAO Asia Pacific Office, whose goal is to enhance the safety and efficiency of air transport in the Asia Pacific region. In September, we partnered with ICAO to deliver a webinar discussing integration of unmanned aircraft systems, or drones, in the U.S. national airspace and Southeast Asia regional airspace. This collaboration demonstrates how we work with our international partners to safely orchestrate bringing new entrants into the airspace and ensuring that they can operate seamlessly, regardless of where they are operating. It's through these long-standing relationships with our Indo-Pacific partners that we can best bring our economies back from COVID-19's impact. By working together and taking coordinated action, we can accomplish much more than if we take actions individually. It's also important to be realistic since we're in uncharted territory. 
some of our actions may very well turn out to be trial and error. Now, history tells us that a safe, secure, and efficient aviation system will support broader economic growth in all sectors. Of course, safe and secure to the traveling public at the moment means safe from COVID-19. And according to the International Air Transport Association, we're doing fairly well on this account. IATA, in addition to studies by aircraft manufacturers and the U.S. Department of Defense, suggests that the risk of a passenger contracting COVID-19 while on board appears very low. And aircraft airflow systems, in addition to mask wearing and other public health risk reduction measures, add further and significant extra layers of protection. Now, this is a positive finding for our industry, but as you're aware, there are many other challenges related to the entire passenger journey, including passenger health in airports and the ability to travel between cities or countries with differing infectious disease protocols. That's in part why governments and industries are looking at this new landscape and out of necessity, discovering new and innovative ways of doing business. I'd like to acknowledge the proactive steps that regional leaders including Vietnam, Japan, and Singapore are taking to establish green routes between city pairs where comprehensive public health surveillance systems have successfully controlled the spread of COVID-19. For example, starting next month, Japan plans to remove a ban on overseas travel to 12 countries, including Taiwan, Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, South Korea, Vietnam, Malaysia, and China. And Singapore in September unilaterally opened its borders to travelers from Brunei and New Zealand, as well as from Vietnam and much of Australia. Now we can look at this as a standing invitation from Singapore to these countries, thanks to the comprehensive public health surveillance systems that have successfully controlled the spread of COVID-19. Green routes show the power of collaboration. And that brings me back to our work in the Indo-Pacific region that's ongoing even now. Working with our global partners around the world to exchange knowledge and information on ways to increase safety while operating ahead of ever-changing technology and industry allows us to stay ahead of the curve on aviation best practices. And working with aviation stakeholders in the Indo-Pacific region to promote technical, policy, and commercial cooperation assists regional aviation experts, airlines, and airports to develop and operate safe and efficient aviation infrastructure. Our support and participation in the U.S. Southeast Asia ACP allows us to work with our global partners and stakeholders in the region to ensure that we meet the public's expectation of high safety and operational performance in the Indo-Pacific. For example, next month, under the Southeast Asia ACP and in partnership with USTDA, we will deliver an airport safety webinar that will focus on airport operational safety during construction and aircraft rescue and firefighting operations. I'll conclude by saying again, when we collaborate and work together, we are more powerful as a force for change, and in this case, for recovery. By sharing our knowledge, information, and best practices as never before, we will not only speed the recovery of our industry, but we will also provide for our citizens the safest, most efficient, and reliable air transportation systems anywhere on the planet. Thank you.